Hey guys, it's Sean. It's October 17th and at 10 o'clock and I'm doing a video blog today about Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass. Um, there are a few people who I'd like to thank for this video. This is my sixth time trying to make this video um, and all their times have failed. I tried on Angie's computer on Thursday but it didn't work and I've been po I've postponed doing it until now. I'd like to dedicate this video to Olivia Falling Star, also known as Olivia McDonough, for her status about um, Jabberwocky, which was a poem from Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, and also Abby Bricefield, who I got into a discussion with this exact same thing today. So it inspired me to recreate this video blog and in hopes that it might actually work this time. Um, so I wanted to talk to you, about, you guys about Alice in Wonderland. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that come to mind. Like, oh yeah, the new Tim Burton movie, it's going to be so cool, and blah, blah, blah. But um, here's the thing, it's going to be shit. And you're like, oh my god, how can it be shit? It's Tim Burton. Well, the thing is, is if you actually read the plot summary, I'm saving you all your time and money, by the way. It's a sequel. And Alice is going back to Wonderland as an adult. And, um, let's see. Wonderland and Looking Glass have, like, fused together. Looking Glass Land have fused together. And, um, the Mad Hatter's in love with her. And she's trying to save Wonder Glass Land. Really? Well, Tim Burton, that's what you get when you hire a writer like Linda fucking Wolverton to write your screenplay. I bet you're wondering, who's Linda Wolverton? Only the shittiest writer alive. Now, she did have two good hits, um, Beauty and the Beast and the Lion King, and you're thinking, well, how could she possibly be bad if she wrote such good films? That's what I thought, too. But then she decided to adapt The Vampire Chronicles into a little musical called The Stat. And there were so many plot holes that I had to fix myself when I directed that production. And I lost all respect for her. She doesn't publicly talk about the stat. She does not acknowledge she ever did it. She doesn't acknowledge she was a part of it. And who had to clean up the mess for his production because he believed in the show? Me. And it really pisses me off that people like Linda Wolverton are able to make all this money like Stephanie Meyer. And they're really shit writers and they can't do anything else besides stupid fluffy shit. Like, I'm sorry, and, like, you know, it, it just bothers me that when you're handling a project like Alice in Wonderland, you think, oh, well, it's a stupid light project, so it'll tire a really shitty, mediocre writer. And, you know, it, it's stupid. And the thing of it is, is that Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, first of all, I bet you half the audience has not read the books. No, and, and no one will know that Through the Looking Glass exists. No one. You know why? Because Alice in Wonderland and, and all of Lewis Carroll's works have become a vehicle for emo kids. What's a vehicle, Sean? Well, a vehicle is like like a, uh, a purpose. A purpose for emo kids to be like, oh, I love weird dark things. When the truth of it is, they've only seen the Disney movie, which is not even a good representation of Alice in Wonderland. And, you know, Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass are, they actually have purposes to them. I know, shocking concept. Shocking, invigorating concept that you would have never thought. But you know what? Alice in Wonderland, if you if you think about it, almost all the characters are are guys. Um, and they're and it's showing the different lights of how men were in the Victorian ages and how someone like a little girl would have to go through to just gain simply respect. And people wouldn't listen to her. They were all ignorant and they just it was such an awful time for women. And it was you know, and then through the looking glass, her transition through the looking glass represents her maturing. And uh, if you know, she strays away from this kind of naive figure, the white queen, and goes with the red queen. And red, uh, wait, shit. Yeah. red in literature is known as blood or menstruation. So, you know, you really think about it. And it actually does have a purpose. And people don't get that. And it's like, well, it's all relative. So let's just combine all the elements from Through the Looking Glass and Alice in Wonderland into one movie. And no, it's you wouldn't mix Harry Potter, two Harry Potter books together. You wouldn't mix two Twilight books together. You wouldn't mix, uh, I, I mean, like, you wouldn't do it, right? Why, why would you? Because they're two totally separate things, right? So why would you decide to mix them to one book? So, just want to let you know, um, no one should see this movie. 
because it's going to be awful, and I want to kill Linda Wolverton and Tim Burton. Um, it has a great cast, though. We'll get to that. But, I, I mean, like, no one... I, I feel like the meaning is lost over time. Like, as time evolves, the meaning of, you know, aristocrats in the Victorian ages is lost. And it happens over time. You know, I don't expect books now that are written to really be relevant to society's problems in the next 100, 200 years. I mean, it happens, but... You know, you gotta look back on this with some literary value and think, wow, these books actually did have a significant impact on that society. And it's just really annoying to me to think that people can come around, these pretentious motherfuckers, they come around and they read this book and don't, don't think twice about it, and they're just using it to make money. I've only seen one straight book adaptation of Alice in Wonderland. It was made in 1985 uh, with Sammy Davis Jr. as the Caterpillar. Uh, he was the only, like, star in that that I know. Oh, Ringo Starr was the Mock Turtle. Um, yeah, it's definitely all the famous people that were in it. And it's a horrible, 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 like, it, it looks awful. It, it really does. It looks tacky and 80s and cheap and, ugh, it's awful. It's, it's like those old Narnia movies, you know, that, like, were, were really nice to the book, but they look like shit. Yeah, it was like that. And I have more respect for those films, quite honestly, because they actually took the time to be good to the uh, to the author and to the material. And, you know, they, they had no money to do it, but they did it, you know, and you got to admire that. And I just really wish we could live in a time where we could be loyal to literature like that. But it's all disregarded and to make money, you know? It's not cool. So... Fuck Linda Wolverton, fuck Tim Burton, fuck all that shit. And when you're watching this video, reread Alice in Wonderland right after it. I don't care what you're doing. Rewatch it, and you'll, I mean, reread it, and you'll see that I was right. It does have a point. And motherfucker, <sighs> you see this is a subject I'm very passionate about. It's like, it's like Christians talking about Jesus or something. I don't know. But, alright, so, what have you learned? Alice in Wonderland has a point. Linda Wolverton should die. High-end Hollywood producers should die. And, um, oh yeah, fuck emo kids.